Many know Rosalind Carter as the former first lady of the White House, the wife of President Jimmy Carter. But how many people know Rosalind Carter, champion for mental health research? Earlier this year, with Mrs. Carter battling dementia, Christy Diaz explored that part of her life, speaking with those who know it best. In the small town of Americas, only 10 miles down the road from the famous hometown of Jimmy and Rosalind Carter sits an organization named after the former First Lady. Its mission is to help a population close to Mrs. Carter's heart. You know, I say, our job is not to make caregiving easy. Our job is to make caregiving less hard. Dr. Jennifer Olson is the CEO of the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregivers. She says both the Carters stayed intimately involved from the day she interviewed for the job in 2018. The first thing that struck me was Mrs. Carter came to the door with my resume in her hand with highlights and notes on it. And uh, President Carter came into the room and said, yeah, shouldn't you go work at the Carter Center? Um, and I then took that as my opportunity to convince both of them and make the case that caregiving is a public health issue. The Institute was created in 1987, but the seed to help was planted more than 20 years earlier when Mr. Carter was running for governor and Mrs. Carter kept getting the same question about mental health. But well, what's the president going to do? What's the president going to do? So she decided to get herself into the line, the meet and greet line for the president, reach out to shake his hand and ask him what he's going to do about mental health. Well, he reached for, by my hand before he looked, before he knew who I was. <laughs> and he said, what are you doing? Doing here, And I said, I want to know what you're going to do for people with men mental illnesses when you're governor of Georgia. Reportedly, didn't he say something like, I'm going to put you in charge of <laughs> that's it? That's right, that's right. And he did. From the governor's mansion to the White House, Mrs. Carter led commissions, testified before the Senate, and wrote books on the issue, while his wife provided the face and voice for the mission. We've heard about the lack of adequate service or the wrong kinds of services. The former president became a quiet ally, relishing the role of supportive husband to tackle the issue together. President Carter donated part of his Nobel Prize winnings to the Institute uh, back 20 years ago. So, I mean, this hasn't just been a recent um, effort. It's been a long-standing level of support. For nearly four decades, the Rosalind Carter Institute has been a quiet disruptor, influencing policy, forging partnerships, and doling out resources to those who need it most. Her vision of a more caring society, do you think we're there yet? Slowly, slowly. Our website is most popular in the late night hours or the early morning hours when a caregiver is reaching their crisis point. About 133 million Americans, nearly half the population, suffers from at least one chronic illness. That's 15 million higher than a decade ago, forcing one in five adults into an active caregiving role. We know caregivers experience especially mental health challenges at higher rates than their non-caregiving peers. Even in their 90s, when Mrs. Carter stepped into a caregiving role once again, Dr. Olson says the Carters were still intimately involved. Their next big goal is to create an office of the caregiver inside the Department of Health and Human Services. Right now, um, there are very few, if any, federal employees who even have the word caregiver in their job title. That just doesn't make sense to us. Sometimes the obvious thing is where the Carters thrived, turning common sense humanity into a lifelong mission and a legacy to be continued. I think there's just a commitment to whatever cause they have put their name to uh, for it to move forward. And you, as a participant in that, just feel like you've got to keep it going.